So, you're on a phone right now, or maybe a computer, a smart TV. Well, guess what? You're swimming in a world built by sea. It's not just some old programming language, it's literally the invisible bedrock of, well, almost everything digital. And the guy who made it, Dennis Ritchie, he just nailed it with this quote. It's kind of funny, right? But it gets to the heart of what C is all about. It has all the power and all the convenience of assembly language. In other words, it's super powerful, but it's also going to make you work for it. So let's get into it. I like to think of C as the mother tongue for pretty much all modern programming. Seriously, it's the language that taught so many others how to speak, its ideas, its syntax. You can see its DNA in languages that were created just yesterday. It's the matriarch of the family. And get this, C was created back in the 1970s. I mean, that's ancient history in the tech world. But even today, it's always, and I mean always, fighting for the top spot on programming popularity lists like the TOB index. So the big question is, how has this 50-year-old language managed to stick around for so long? Well, the story starts at Bell Labs. And C wasn't some, you know, abstract academic project. Nope, it was built because they absolutely had to have it. So you can kind of see how it grew up. It starts in 72 as this little project. For a long, long time, the only real manual was this legendary book called KNRC. It wasn't until 1989 that it finally got an official standardized stamp of approval. And then later on, you get updates like C99 that bolted on some more modern features. And this is the real reason C even exists. See, back then, if you wanted to write an operating system, you had to use assembly language. And the problem with assembly is that it's tied to one specific type of computer. The team at Bell Labs had this new OS, Unix, and they needed to write it in something that was fast, but also something they could move to other computers without rewriting the whole thing. The language they needed simply didn't exist. So what do you do? You invent it. You can think of C as this perfect bridge. It lets a programmer talk directly to the computer's memory, to the bare metal hardware. It's a level of control that, frankly, most modern languages are designed to protect you from. Okay, but what does that phrase, direct access to memory, actually mean? Let's use a little analogy here to make it super clear. All right, picture all of a computer's memory as just this huge open field of empty plots of land. When you declare a variable, like, say, age equals 22, you're basically putting a stake in the ground, claiming one of those plots, giving it the name age, and then plopping a little container on it that holds the number 22. Simple enough, right? Okay, now here comes the magic of C, the pointer. A pointer is a special kind of variable. It doesn't hold a value like 22. No, no, it holds the address, the street address, if you will, of another plot of land. So instead of holding 22, it holds the location of our age variable. And that, that right there is the key. It's what lets you go directly to any spot in memory and mess with what's inside. So this means you've got two main ways to manage all this land. First, there's automatic memory. Think of it like a temporary workspace the compiler sets up for you. When you're done with your task, poof, it cleans itself up. Easy. But then there's dynamic memory. This is more like renting a storage unit. You have to specifically ask for it. You have to put your stuff in it. And, and this is the important part, when you're done, you are responsible for telling the system you're finished and clearing it out. It's exactly this nitty-gritty, fine-grained control over memory that made C the absolute go-to for building the foundations of, well, everything. The fact that it was super fast and could talk directly to the hardware, but you could still pick it up and move it to another machine? That combination was an absolute game-changer. Nothing else could do that at the time. And, I mean, just look at where it's used. The very heart of Windows, Linux, Mac OS, that's C. The compilers that run languages like Python or Ruby, yep, written in C. The driver that makes your graphics card work, C. The engine running your favorite game, C. The little chip inside your microwave or your car's dashboard, you guessed it, C. But let's go back to that quote from the beginning. All this amazing power, it comes at a price. And that price is a whole lot of responsibility. Here's the thing about C. It trusts you. Maybe a little too much. It assumes you're a professional and you know exactly what you're doing. It will happily let you reach into any memory address you point to, even if that's a catastrophically bad idea that will bring the whole system crashing down. There are no seatbelts, no airbags, no guardrails. And this is where you get those classic nightmare bugs. A memory leak, that's when you forget to free up your storage unit. The program just loses access to that chunk of memory forever. 
a buffer overrun? That's like trying to shove a sofa into a tiny locker. The doors break off and it spills out, smashing whatever was in the locker next door. And a dangling pointer? That's like holding a key to a storage unit you canceled last month. You can still try to open it, but who knows what's in there now? It's just asking for trouble. So all of this leads to a pretty interesting question for us today, right? Most modern languages have, you know, automated all this stuff. They have garbage collection to clean up your memory for you. They've put up all the guardrails C doesn't have. But in gaining all that safety, all that convenience, I wonder, have we lost something? Have we lost that deep, fundamental understanding of how the machine actually works? The kind of discipline you had to learn from working in the raw, powerful, and totally unforgiving world of C?